Buonasera a tutti, eh, signori ambasciatori, gentili amici, cari studenti, professori, buonasera, benvenuti al nostro appuntamento, consueto appuntamento dei forum interreligiosi e dopo la pausa eh, del periodo di Natale ecco, riprendiamo le nostre attività e questa sera abbiamo il piacere e l'onore eh, di avere con noi l'ambasciatore del Marocco presso la Santa Sede, eh, Sua Eccellenza la signora Rajae Naji, e che eh, è così offerta di essere con noi e di presentarci un tema eh, molto importante. La ringraziamo di questa, di questa sua eh, disponibilità. E il tema di questa sera è i primissimi inizi del dialogo tra musulmani e monoteisti, a partire dalla Sura 11 eh, del Corano, che eh, recito in italiano. Se il tuo Signore l'avesse voluto, avrebbe fatto di tutti gli uomini una sola nazione. Invece sono sempre discordi tra di loro, eccetto quelli di cui il tuo Signore ha pietà. Per questo, infatti, li ha creati. Quindi un tema interessante, un tema per il dialogo e soprattutto ecco, da, dalla prospettiva musulmana, anche dalla prospettiva di una persona ecco, speciale che ricopre anche un ruolo eh, istituzionale e importante. Do qualche informazione eh, biografica eh, di Sua Eccellenza che eh, ha, un ruolo anche, ha ricoperto anche un ruolo accademico perché è stata professore eh, di eh, legge, di studi del diritto, presso l'Università di Mohammed V eh, a Rabat e ha anche altri titoli, eh, diversi titoli, diverse eh, eh, awards, premi e eh, ruoli istituzionali ricoperti. Ovviamente adesso ricopre il ruolo di diplomatico um, e autrice di diversi eh, testi di diversi libri, 12 libri e articoli eh, su riviste internazionali e nazionali sul, sul diritto eh, alla salute, sui diritti umani, sui diritti dell'infanzia, sul diritto di famiglia, sul filosofia del diritto e anche sulla, eh, sulla secolarizzazione, sulla laicità e sul dialogo eh, interreligioso. Ha anche partecipato a decine di colloqui accademici, di incontri, di conferenze in varie parti, in varie parti del mondo. È interessante anche il suo percorso accademico perché ha due dottorati, eh, un PhD e un dottorato sempre nel campo eh, delle, della legge, oltre alla laurea, oltre alla laurea specialistica. Ecco, siamo onorati di averla con noi, signor ambasciatore, e ascoltiamo volentieri questa sua relazione. E, tra l'altro abbiamo fornito eh, un foglio con eh, la traduzione, cioè con il testo, parte del testo eh, in italiano e in inglese. Eh, avverto anche che siamo in collegamento eh, streaming, quindi... Eh, saluto anche quelli che ci seguono da casa, ricordo anche che al termine eh, della presentazione eh, dell'ambasciatore eh, sarà possibile anche fare delle domande da casa, qui il professor Trianni le riporterà ovviamente eh, in aula. Quindi la serata, come sapete, eh, per quelli che magari non sono eh, non frequentano sempre i nostri forum, si divide in due parti. La prima parte abbiamo la, diciamo, la, 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 la conferenza dell'ambasciatore, dell del nostro speaker e poi la seconda parte dedicata a domande ed osservazioni quindi continuerà in un certo senso attraverso un'interazione un po' più diretta, più coinvolgente a lei la parola grazie mille Professor Bon Giovanni, all my thanks for uh, Gregoriana uh, University uh, giving us that opportunity to be in exchange and to uh, discover each other, but especially my thanks for uh, Professor uh, Bon Giovanni 
for all he do uh, he does and he uh, he did and he does for uh, that uh, knowledge to rapprochement uh, between islam and uh, christianism and uh, my thanks go to uh, Excellencies, uh, Ambassador, uh, sharing with us that uh, wonderful moment, and all the audience for Dr. Uh, Radwan, for all the audience, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and for students um, occupying one great place in my life because I share with them all my life, and so they, they, they are a great part in, uh, in my life. Uh, in this paper, I will start by my one question, and we'll start. I will try to uh, give some elements of an uh, answer. How Islamic law imposes dialogue, respect of differences, g good behavior forward non-Muslim, but especially forward, forward monotheists. To answer, I will focus on four points. At the beginning, I will uh, start by uh, the uh, terminology to uh, elucidate some, uh, some words uh, very used in uh, Islam, in our culture, but uh, usually we don't uh, uh, give a lot of attention to discover what is the, the, the real meaning. And uh, I will try to bring some argument from Quran and Sunnah. And Sunnah is the um, parables perils and uh, the behavior of the prophet in several situations as uh, act or re reaction uh, besides some, uh, some uh, situation and some uh, events. And we'll try also to uh, bring some arguments from uh, the, the first consti constitution in the world, the constitution of Medina, written by uh, the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the last uh, argument will uh, try to give a couple of uh, idea about 15 centuries of existence of the Muslim society. So for the first uh, uh, access, terminology elucidation, let me at first clarify the meaning of Islam itself. What is the meaning of Islam? The radical of Islam is salam, and salam is peace. And so when you say Islam, you say at the beginning, at the first, Salam, peace, but also Islam is the obligation to submit to God, but not only to God, but uh, to his rules, principles, and precepts. And to, to have a behavior in compatibility with the rules and precepts and principles. And it is the respect to the rules and uh, values, precept, and principle imposed by God, by Islam. The third meaning of Islam is to adopt a good behavior in total compatibility with those rules, with himself or herself, with the others, with the difference in um, spirit of diversity. Also, Salam is one of the name of God. And so when we ask God, we, do, we say Salam. And when we say Salam, we ask for Salam, we ask for peace, and we pray that the peace uh, be with us and on us. And Salam, as the name of God, means that the God is free from any faults, from any imperfections. And he is the source of salam. And when we are in good relation with God, we are, you are in peace, and peace is on you. So to be uh, all the time on the uh, term of uh, salam, security, safety, prophet traditions were established. Kalin Muslims to repeat in each prayer Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. God, you are peace and peace come f comes from you. With that manner, we are asking for peace.
and it gives a manner of education for all Muslims. When we repeat all the time that words, that means that you, will, uh, you are tra in training and you, you are learning to be all the time in Salam. <coughs> And to spread salam. So there were a hadith saying that be one of who spread salam. You are in obligation to be in salam with uh, yourself, with others, and to spread peace where you are. And another uh, uh, hadith says that al Muslim man salim al nasu min lisanihi wa yadihi. The good Muslim is one from whose tongue and hand people are in security. That's the, 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 if you want the definition of Muslim. And we are used to repeat all the time uh, as a greeting to say all the time, Salamu Alaikum. When we say Salamu Alaikum, we are spreading Salam and you are, we, we, say, we say each other, you are in peace and I hope to be in peace and to be all of us in peace. Another hadith says that uh, one, uh, be one of those who spread salam by behavior, not only by uh, expression, but also by behavior. So in Islamic atmosphere, peace must be spread everywhere by expression, by behaviors, by relationship, by salam, by, uh, by uh, greeting, by uh, salutation. Uh, so, the, in terms of re recap, I will say that impartially, Islam is therefore a source of peace, security, safety, serenity, respect for person, for societies, for cultures, for civilization, for community, for countries, for all the humanity, but especially for monotheists. In the second point, I will try to uh, support my answer by some Quranic verses. It is impossible to bring all verses, but I will limit myself to give just some examples. So it, was, it will be the, the second uh, uh, axis, argument from Quran and Sunnah. In fact, it is impossible. I, I, I said uh, it, it uh, depends of hundreds of, uh, if not uh, uh, thousands of uh, verses, Quranic verses and hadiths, uh, asking, inviting, uh, imposing uh, to Muslim to be in salam, in behavior, in expression, in relationship. From the Quran, I will uh, uh, read on, only uh, some, verse, uh, some verses. When God say, we, uh, saying about uh, himself, we have created you male and female and have made you nations and tribes that you may know, you know each other. So, uh, and uh, in the second one, it is said that if your Lord, if your God, has so willed, he would certainly made the world, mankind, one community, but they will not cease to be different, to differ. So we uh, deduce from that that the diversity is a will, a lot of will, and it's a lot who uh, uh, choose to, uh, to create the, un the universe and the humanity different and in diversity. We deduce also that all Muslims must accept, respect, submit to the Lord of will by accepting diversity the similarities respecting all other cultures different. And hundreds of uh, uh, prophetic hadiths repeat the same thing and learn the Muslim how to be, uh, to, to accept the difference and to be in a good relationship in behavior and expression with the other's difference. After that, a special treatment was reserved for the monotheists. Those uh, example I, I bring about uh, the volunty of the of God to create the humanity diverse and uh, different. There were a lot of verses and hadiths 
reserved to the monotheist, saying, for example, don't argue with people of the book, monotheist, only in the best way. So when you are in discussion with the monotheist, you must use good word, good expression, and good behavior. And in other verses, it is said, say, all people of the book, come to common terms between us and you. We share a lot of things, and if we have to debate, we have debate about what we are sharing, but not about what separates us. From the prophetic hadith, I focus on the fact that the prophet himself was married with one Jew and one Christian. And uh, during his life, he respected their cultures and he respected their, their tribes and their community, their families. So to recap, I will just say that uh, law and theology in Islam impose, call, invite believers to accept and respect diversity to have good behavior toward non-Muslim, to be in conviviality, friendliness, so solidarity, assistance, modesty, mercy, grace, cohabitation, live together, politeness, and civility. And hence to be in perpetual dialogue, but using good manners, good ways, good words. To exchange, to be in mutual aid, to be in a relationship uh, perpetual, to be with all, with the monotheists especially, but also with all the humanity. I will uh, give an idea uh, and uh, some argument from the first constitution in the world is the constitution of the Medina. Medina was the first city for Muslim uh, community. And it was, uh, if you want, the pillar of the future state, the future empire. So in that Medina, in that um, first city, the Prophet established norms, law, and uh, 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 constitution. It is the first constitution written in the, the world. It is called the Constitution of Medina, or Pax of Medina. And it, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, composed by two pacts. One pact was written for the Jews and the other one for Christian. <coughs> and this, that constitution uh, continued to, to have some um, characteristics, some uh, edities. From them, that it is uh, the, the, the first one written in the, the humanity, in the, the story. And uh, it contains 54 principles and rules. Beyond them, 25 were uh, reserved for Muslim, for, for Muslim and non-Muslim, but 27 were reserved for non-Muslim. And it describes all the rights for Jews and for Christians. And when uh, the, the prophet who were asked uh, how to do with the other communities, he said, you do the same time and you uh, extend the constitution for all other communities. So it is the first, and until now it is, uh, I think, the unique uh, constitution, uh, reserving, reserving um, a, a great place for the diversity, for the others, for the other communities. And it is uh, protecting for the non-Muslim all rights, in addition of fundamental rights, it is protecting the faith, the religious, the conscience, the, the freedom of conscience, the worship, the worship uh, uh, house, the religious leader, and to protect all uh, things uh, in uh, um, relationship with the, the uh, religion and the uh, freedom of conscience and the freedom of worship. The second uh, characteristic of that constitution, it is uh, uh, it was extended to the other community uh, uh, expressly. 
And in that constitution, and it is another characteristic that it was, it, it, it went far, so far, to uh, reserve a place to the wife, uh, when the wife is non-Muslim and uh, she is married with a Muslim. It's an, an obligation for the Muslim, for the husband, to keep her free from any duty, from any family duty, during the day of uh, religious day and during the ceremonies, and to give her all the freedom to practice her uh, religion, her conviction. And now I will uh, start to bring some uh, arguments from the 15 centuries of existence of the uh, Muslim society and from everyday practices and behaviors. Comfort to, to uh, Islamic uh, philosophy and principles, all Muslim countries were and are during the 15th century of their existence loyally practicing the same precepts uh, of diversity, conviviality, solidarity, living together and helpful. But being impossible to translate 15 centuries in such uh, small times, let me limit myself to some examples and proof and testimonies. When Islam arrived in new fields, in many lands, the responsible keep worship house free. So believers, Muslim, Christian, and Jews, and others, pray a breeze side by side in Damascus, in Jerusalem, in Fez, in Marrakesh, in Cordu, in all over the, 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 the Islamic world. And the same building was at the same time mosque, uh, uh, church, and uh, synagogue. Hence, when Omar ibn al-Khattab uh, uh, conquered uh, Jerusalem, he brought a pact for the population, for people living in Jerusalem, and give, uh, give them all the guarantee that they will be in uh, freedom of uh, conscience and uh, worship. It is called, in the history, it is called uh, Lilia, Ilia, because Jerusalem uh, has, had come as a name, Lilia. Ilia Pact, if you search uh, Ilia Pact, you will find the, the, the pact given by uh, Omar ibn al-Khattab, and Omar ibn al-Khattab was the second caliph after the prophet. He was the, the second uh, head of the state, Islamic state, after the prophet. It is uh, said, Ilia Pact. And the second uh, argument that all Arabic Muslim countries keep uh, the diversity. Moreover, they were the unique to do. That explains why we keep in our lands different, different breed, races, different ethnicities, different regions, different sects, different languages, colors, and why we live together in the same neighborhood and why the racism doesn't uh, find any place in our countries. And in different uh, periods, when crisis, and crisis when some community were oppressed or expulsed from some lands, they found uh, refuge in uh, Islamic world, in Moroccan empire and everywhere in the world, uh, the, Muslim, the Muslim world. So when Jews were expelled from England under Edward at 1290, or under Inquisition in Spain and other spaces, or under Nazi regime and not, uh, under Holocaust, all rescues found a place in Moroccan Empire and everywhere in the other Muslim world. And the aimed uh, thing I will, I will uh, give now is uh, concerning Morocco. Uh, under the Nazi regime, and when the Nazi regime uh, invaded, invaded France and established the Vichy regime, the Vichy regime asked, uh, sent uh, a corp, a military corps uh, presided by one high responsible 
and they get uh, audience be, with the Moroccan king, king Mohammed V. And the uh, head of that uh, corp asked Mohammed V to deliver all the Jews, Moroccan Jews, to the uh, Nazi regime. Mohammed V firmly and sternly said that all Moroccan Jews and Muslims are my daughter and my sons, and they are my protected. And never a father abandoned his son or his, his family, risking with that his throne, but rather his life, because Morocco was under protectorate at that moment. From Morocco, also, I will bring another argument called Imarat al Muminin, Commandry of uh, Faithful. Commandry of Faithful is an institution, that is an Islamic institu institution, established by the Prophet himself. And what is the meaning of uh, Imarat al Muminin, Commandry of, uh, of Faithful? It is the protection of all believers, and it is also the protection of uh, the uh, conviction the faith from any uh, radicalism and from any deviation. So that uh, institution was uh, kept by uh, the Khalifa uh, during the, 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 the long history, but it is uh, living until now only in Morocco. So the Moroccan king is at the same time the chief of the state, but he is also the commander of faithful. And between the, 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 the attribution of the uh, commander of faithful, Imarat al-Mu'minin or Amir al-Mu'minin, is the protection of all believers. That's why Muhammad V said when the Nazi, uh, Nazi regime asked him to deliver Jews, he said, they are my daughter and my sons. I cannot deliver them because I protect them. Because the uh, commander of faithful protects all believers and guarantee for them the freedom of conscience and the freedom of cult. So they can do uh, all their uh, worship without any, any uh, I think, uh, problem. It is an, uh, it is a, among the, I think, the attribution of the, the commander of faithful is to spread the, and the, the pure Islamic rules. And so with, for that, a lot of institutions are working um, with, the, with the, the commander of uh, faithful and to ensure coexistence and diversity in the society and to protect anyone from any contrast to change his uh, uh, conviction for any a reason and to, prefer, to pr proliferate dialogue tradition to establish in education the spirit of acceptance of difference and dialogue to accomplish this sublime attribution several institutions are attending his majesty the commander of uh, faithful such as the high council of ulama ulama is a uh, uh, islamic scientist and the regional councils of ulama of scientists, Islamic scientists, and a lot of other, of, uh, other institutions as the Ministry of uh, Islamic uh, Affairs and other, a lot of uh, other institutions. <coughs> uh, and the most important that all those attributions are consecrated in the Moroccan constitution and they are protected from any Reform. They cannot be reformed at all. I will bring another, uh, another uh, argument from Al Qarawiyin University. I don't know if you know what is, it, what is it. It is the first and the oldest university in the world. It was uh, built in Fez, Morocco, at uh, 859. And uh, the, the amazing thing, it was established, it was built by a woman, but lady, by Lady Fatima al-Fihriya. And uh, 
from the beginning, it is ensuring all um, specialties, theological, legal, but also uh, scientist uh, specialties, as uh, mathematics, medicine, astronomy, pharmacology, uh, psychology, philosophy, etc. And it was all the time receiving students, but also teachers from all over the world and from all, all uh, religious. So uh, among the most uh, famous personality having their student study in uh, al Qarawiyyah University, uh, the Pope Sylvester II in, in the 11th century, and also the Jews, Moses Maimonid, who were uh, philosopher, uh, physician, mathematician, and uh, uh, astrologue. And he was the doctor of um, several, uh, several uh, chiefs uh, of the states in several uh, fields. And he was also a high responsible in the uh, religious leader. And thousands of famous orientalists uh, have had their uh, students in al Qarawiyyin University. So the, the, the amazing other thing is that al Qarawiyyin was during uh, his his uh, history, a place, an interspace between, uh, uh, of dialogue between civilization, and the history brought a lot of uh, dialogue between Muslim and non-Muslim students and uh, professors. And it was uh, <coughs> a turn of multiculturality, of dialogue between cultures, in total respect of faith, differences, and conviction. And the wonderful thing that no one was obliged to convert to Islam. And they went, they, they, they go, they went back in their countries uh, safe and with the, 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 the entire or the intact uh, conviction. And a small preview on the writing, the writing of Orientalists tell us uh, uh, a lot of uh, their appreciation the freedom of uh, expression in terms of analysis of criticism toward Islam, customs, history, al qarawin itself, of our society. And it had never been an obstacle to uh, access for the access of the other students coming from other lands, other uh, culture, other uh, religions. And let me finish that uh, uh, piece of uh, experience by some tradition established in al qarawiyyin that is al abaa the uh, custom the al mm, abaa mm, the mm, garment the graduated uh, put and wore the the, the, the day of uh, graduation it is a special uh, tradition from al qarawiyyin and it is keeping until now and until now you see uh, gradu the graduated wearing uh, a cap and uh, the garment, the, Ara the Arabic abaya, it's the Arabic abaya, and if you take some photo, you will uh, uh, remark the same, uh, the same uh, garments on the old uh, students and the old professors, and also in the recent uh, professors, uh, uh, excuse me, the students. And that abaya had a meaning because only professors and uh, teachers and high uh, searcher and high personality in the society were allowed to, to put al abaa And so it was a symbol of this uh, distinguishing of the, between uh, um, scientists and non-scientists, between high society and uh, uh, others. And when the students went back in their countries, they went with that garment and they show the distinguished, um, if you want, statues for all the, 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 the society, and it was a symbol of uh, a grade in the society, scientific and soci social uh, uh, grade. I will uh, start uh, also beside one uh, another uh, tradition is Tumlilin. I think uh, no one uh, had uh, heard about that. Tumlilin is a church, a church 
in the Morocco, in Morocco, in Atlas, in the high mountain of Atlas, and it was established uh, since a long time. But in 1958, it became an academy for dialogue, special academy for dialogue, uh, inviting high professor like. Um, uh, Massigno, like Massigno and others, and uh, Turan, no, Turan, I think, no, but Massigno had the, used to, to, to be all the time in uh, uh, that academy. And inviting uh, high uh, thinkers and wise thinkers from all over the world for dialogue. And the singular thing that uh, the uh, prince. Uh, Hassan II, Hassan II was still a prince, and he shared with them all those dialogues because he was very, very uh, interested to that. And so he was all the time present in those uh, areas. And I think it was the first one in our recent history to uh, reserve a large place for dialogue, but unfortunately it was stopped for several reasons. I think it will be very difficult to, uh, to bring a lot of, uh, lot of uh, examples, but uh, wh one uh, thing is uh, sure that those examples I will give were repeated and duplicated in all the Muslim world, in all the university around the world, and uh, around the Muslim world. I will finish by <coughs> giving a short image about what is happening in Morocco since 22 years now. Since Muhammad VI accessed to the throne, he started a huge reform program for the religious field aiming to protect the pure Islamic rule against any radicalism doctrine at the ear of radicalism. The moderate Islam adopted by Morocco since 15 centuries to proliferate the pure Islamic value, rules, principle, and precept, to inculcate all those precepts to teacher and religious leader. For that, a number of institutes were established, having an international famous reputation such as the training imams and the preachers men and women institute, receiving thousands of students from uh, Morocco, but at 80% from Africa and Europe. And the other institute is the African Muslim Scientist Institute, in charge of spreading moderate Islamic values and rules all over Africa. In addition of reforms of the Ministry of Religious Affairs, the reform of High Council ulama, uh, Muslim scientists, as, uh, as I said uh, before, and Regional Council of ulama. I hope I wish to give you uh, an approximative idea about the title proposed to give uh, and to give uh, you some answer to the question I gave at the beginning. Thank you for attention. Wassalamu alaikum. Peace with you. Peace on you. Thank you.